Can you hear me now? Okay. Hey guys, the stream's gonna start in just a second, but first we have some people from LG to talk about some of the cool details of the Flex Monitor. First up is Mina Lee. She's the Director of Gaming Strategy and Marketing at LG. How are you doing today, Mina? I'm doing great. How's it going for you, George? I'm doing great too. So let's talk about the LG Display Group and what you guys do there. Well, LG Display is the research arm of all OLED products from LG brand. And one of our core research has been about making the perfect gaming monitor that no gamers have yet experienced. The world's first 21 by 9 OLED bendable monitor is definitely an excitement for us here as well. Yeah, I was excited the minute I saw the first prototype almost a year ago now. It's been a really cool experience working with you guys on such an innovative product. What was it like for you guys? Everyone was hands-on to accomplish something together from day one. Uh, what I have here with me uh, here is the very first mock-up from Corsair's DFM engineer in January from the very first CAD that LG Display shared with Corsair. But working with Corsair was a very special experience. Not only is Corsair an established premium brand that understands gamers so well, 
The strategic alliance between Corsair and LG was what we were looking for to launch this special product. Glad to hear you guys enjoyed it too. Thanks, Mina. Thanks a lot. Now let's talk to Dennis Yang, who's the director of the gaming product planning team. How are you doing today, Dennis? Hi, Zert. I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm doing great. Let's talk about the why. Uh, there have been curved monitors around for years, so what's different about this one? Our studies show that gamers play three to four different games in a week and monitor what the different curves that gamers perform differently. For example, sports games require the flat screens, mobile games require a 1000 R curve, while RPG games are best on 800 R curves for deeper immersion and performance. Right, so instead of buying an 800R curved screen and then having to suffer through that with FIFA and Madden, or you know, buying a flat monitor and then having to use that for Far Cry or The Witcher or something, you can curve the monitor to the right game type. That makes total sense, no compromises. Let's talk some other specs. Can you give us a rundown of some of the other cool parts of the LG OLED tech? LG OLED technology boasts the world's fastest 0.0 millisecond in response time. OLED is also composed of millions of self-lighting pixels that provide the exceptional HDR performance that all gamers and gaming developers dream of. The response time and the HDR tech is phenomenal and the deep blacks that OLED gives you are one of my favorite things about it. Um, we're gonna get more into the details during the stream. Why don't you give us one little thing about the LG OLED tech that people may not know. LG OLED technology protects gamers' eyes because it naturally emits less blue light, no flicker, and less discomfort glares. Oh cool, so now I can game right up until bedtime with no sleep interruptions. Thanks a lot, Dennis. Thank you. All right, stick with us. Keep an eye on the countdown timer. We'll be back with Roby very soon.
Hey guys, the stream's gonna start in just a second, but first we have some people from LG to talk about some of the cool details of the Flex Monitor. First up is Mina Lee. She's the Director of Gaming Strategy and Marketing at LG. How are you doing today, Mina? I'm doing great. How's it going for you, George? I'm doing great too. So let's talk about the LG Display Group and what you guys do there. Well, LG Display is the research arm of all OLED products from LG brand. And one of our core research has been about making the perfect gaming monitor that no gamers have yet experienced. The world's first 21 by 9 OLED bendable monitor is definitely an excitement for us here as well. Yeah, I was excited the minute I saw the first prototype almost a year ago now. It's been a really cool experience working with you guys on such an innovative product. What was it like for you guys? Everyone was hands-on to accomplish something together from day one. Uh, what I have here with me uh, here is the very first mock-up from Corsair's DFM engineer in January from the very first CAD that LG Display shared with Corsair. But working with Corsair was a very special experience. Not only is Corsair an established premium brand that understands gamers so well, the strategic alliance between Corsair and LG was what we were looking for to launch this special product. Glad to hear you guys enjoyed it too. Thanks, Mina. Thanks a lot. Now let's talk to Dennis Yang, who's the director of the gaming product planning team. How are you doing today, Dennis? Hi, Zert. I'm doing very good. 
How are you? I'm doing great. Let's talk about the why. Uh, there have been curved monitors around for years, so what's different about this one? Our studies show that gamers play three to four different games in a week and monitor what the different curves that gamers perform differently. For example, sports games require the flat screens, MOBA games require a 1000R curve, while RPG games are best on 800R curves for deeper immersion and performance. Right, so instead of buying an 800R curved screen and then having to suffer through that with FIFA and Madden, or you know, buying a flat monitor and then having to use that for Far Cry or The Witcher or something, you can curve the monitor to the right game type. That makes total sense, no compromises. Let's talk some other specs. Can you give us a rundown of some of the other cool parts of the LG OLED tech? LG OLED technology boasts the world's fastest 0 0.2 millisecond in response time. OLED is also composed of millions of self-lighting pixels that provide the exceptional HDR performance that all gamers and gaming developers dream of. The response time and the HDR tech is phenomenal and the deep blacks that OLED gives you are one of my favorite things about it. Um, we're gonna get more into the details during the stream. Why don't you give us one little thing about the LG OLED tech that people may not know. LG OLED technology protects gamers' eyes because it naturally emits less blue light, no flicker, and less discomfort glares. Oh cool, so now I can game right up until bedtime with no sleep interruptions. Thanks a lot, Dennis. Thank you. All right, stick with us. Keep an eye on the countdown timer. We'll be back with Roby very soon. Tumble down barriers of a heart I found And I want it back I let you in, kept you company Gave until I couldn't breathe Do you remember that? Just holding on to you is like holding on to smoke You're drifting through my fingers Every time I think I'm getting close and I go
Hey guys, the stream's gonna start in just a second, but first we have some people from LG to talk about some of the cool details of the Flex Monitor. First up is Mina Lee. She's the Director of Gaming Strategy and Marketing at LG. How are you doing today, Mina? I'm doing great. How's it going for you, George? I'm doing great too. So let's talk about the LG Display Group and what you guys do there. Well. LG Display is the research arm of all OLED products from LG brand. And one of our core research has been about making the perfect gaming monitor that no gamers have yet experienced. The world's first 21 by 9 OLED bendable monitor is definitely an excitement for us here as well. Yeah, I was excited the minute I saw the first prototype almost a year ago now. It's been a really cool experience working with you guys on such an innovative product. What was it like for you guys? Everyone was hands-on to accomplish something together from day one. Uh, what I have here with me uh, here is the very first mock-up from Corsair's DFM engineer in January from the very first CAD that LG Display shared with Corsair. But working with Corsair was a very special experience. Not only is Corsair an established premium brand that understand gamers so well, the strategic alliance between Corsair and LG was what we were looking for to launch this special product. Glad to hear you guys enjoyed it too. Thanks, Mina. Thanks a lot. Now let's talk to Dennis Yang, who's the director of the gaming product planning team. How are you doing today, Dennis? Hi, Zert. I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm doing great. Let's talk about the why. Uh, there have been curved monitors around for years, so what's different about this one? Our starters showed up Gamers play three to four different games in a week and monitor what the different curves that gamers perform differently. For example, sports games require the flat screens. Mobile games require a 1000R curve, while RPG games are best on 800R curves for deeper immersion and performance. Right, so instead of buying an 800R curved screen and then having to suffer through that with FIFA and Madden, or you know, buying a flat monitor and then having to use that for Far Cry or The Witcher or something, you can curve the monitor to the right game type. That makes total sense, no compromises. Let's talk some other specs. Can you give us a rundown of some of the other cool parts of the LG OLED tech? LG OLED technology boasts the world's fastest 0.0 millisecond in response time. OLED is also composed of Millions of self-lighting pixels that provide the exceptional HDR performance that all gamers and gaming developers dream of. The response time and the HDR tech is phenomenal and the deep blacks that OLED gives you are one of my favorite things about it. Um, we're gonna get more into the details during the stream. Why don't you give us one little thing about the LG OLED tech that people may not know. LG OLED technology protects gamers' eyes because it naturally emits less blue light, no flicker, and less discomfort glares. Oh cool, so now I can game right up until bedtime with no sleep interruptions. Thanks a lot, Dennis. Thank you. All right, stick with us. Keep an eye on the countdown timer. We'll be back with Roby very soon. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Corsair Livestream. I'm George Makris, and today we're gonna to be talking about our Xenion Flex gaming monitor. But before we get into the specs of that, welcome back to our new uh, friend, Roby, who's been here a couple times before. Well, I guess not here. Not here, no, this is completely different this time. I mean, it's it's smaller, but not less impressive. Let me <laughs> let me just let me just say that. I'm actually, I, and by the way, so stoked to get to talk about such an awesome product. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't even, I'm having a hard time containing myself. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, we joke about like every new product is a new thing, but this one really has some features that nothing else does, right? So the, the Xenion Flex Gaming Monitor, the name Flex is in it for a reason. So yes. maybe we should roll the video to let people get kind of the hype up, and then we can talk a little bit about the details. Huh? I am ready. All right, let's roll the video.
Well, I like the video because obviously our guys made it. But what do you think, man? <laughs> oh, man. I am like... Just the first time I remember, I was at the Radeon event with RDNA three, and they and we got we were watching uh, basically a trailer for Callista Protocol, and when I got to do that first bend, like on top of that, like already my pecs grew, but all in, outside of that, like it blew my mind. And then, I can tell you've been using it a lot because you're <laughs> pretty shredded now. I am I am pretty shredded, but I'll be honest. Like so, my primary gaming monitor at home is actually I I I uh, I'm on an LG C two, right? Ooh. So that is the one that I'll do for for um, basically controller gameplay and to have something now where I don't have to switch for uh, mouse and keyboard to get that immersion when I'm basically playing like World of Warcraft, Callisto Protocol, all that sort of stuff is mind-blowing and I cannot wait for people to see this in person because L, uh, basically OLED you have to see in person right. to really understand. So I, I agree 100%. The first time I ever saw an OLED TV, uh, you know, I had read about them and I'd seen, you know, specs and stuff online, but I thought like, hey, you know, my LCD looks yep. fine. It's great. I have no problem. It's a pretty nice high-end LCD TV. And then I was at CES actually one year and I walked through one of the booths and I was just like, is that TV off? Yeah. And it wasn't. It was just playing a very dark section. When the when OLED is is off, or the pixels are off, they're black. Like it's it's gorgeous how inky black those things are. There's no compression artifact. It's just off. And it really helps so much with contrast ratio and immersion, especially with the, the quality graphics you see in modern games. You know, it's, it's amazing to see the OLED quality. So even before you get into the flex capability or the widescreen capability or the refresh rate, just having an OLED monitor is already a step up from a color perspective. Uh, I, absolutely. I mean, like, there are games that are just on the horizon, like, and this will be out, you know, this will be out, at, you know, for us to get to play with them. But, like, you know, I was thinking about Callista Protocol. Again, yeah. the, the makers of Dead Space, absolutely scary game. Black blacks mean yeah. something, right? So, so to have something like that, but then to be able to be like, okay, I'm scared, and then it's like, Ooh, yeah. now I'm really scared because you're immersed in it. It is, I, I don't so know. So let's talk about that a little bit because I have used curved monitors okay. before, right? And one of the things that I love about curved monitors is the immersion in, yep. in single player games like Far Cry or like you said, like Dead Space. Um, I even like, especially racing and simulators, like I played Horizon, Forza Horizon yep. on one and I loved it. It was a great time. Um, you know, I guess all the flight sim guys are huge into them. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, there are times when you really want that flat screen, right? Like all the competitive FPS games like Valorant or CSGO or those types of things, you really want that flat screen and the high refresh and the good response time. Yep. So this monitor is the first monitor that does both of those things, yep. right? So you can be sitting there and saying, hey, you know what? I'm, you know, playing CSGO with my buddies. We're playing comp. We're going to try and make it to the next level. Um, but that's going to be a flat screen. Yep. Then your buddies go, log off, they're done, they got their own stuff going on, you're sitting around looking, I got three or four more hours I want a game on. You know what, I'm going to Far, Far Cry 6 or something like that. And you bend that monitor and get into it. You know, it's really funny. Like, I have, you know, I'm getting to work in this space, and I, I worked at Xbox for 20 years. Like, I know a lot of eSport gamers, and a lot of them actually have two monitors for this very reason. Right. They have the monitor that they'll sit there and they'll do FPS gaming, but they still want that high quality. Like, being able to tell differentiations in colors makes a big difference, especially in games like Fortnite, et cetera, right? right? OLED actually works very well there, and to have that flat. But then they'll switch to a different monitor because they want that immersion. And so to have all of those in one is actually really, really awesome. Right. And so that's the other thing, too. So it's not only the color accuracy and the, the high quality contrast that you get from LED and the cool flex of capability, but the 21 by 9 ultra wide uh, aspect ratio is great for side by side type stuff, right? Like if you're going to play any of the co-op games where you can actually have like a full player one, player two experience. Yeah, and I mean, and that's the, like that's that's the other thing too is like all in all, there aren't a lot of one of the benefits of ultra rides and like being able to sit down with my son and play Call of Duty Modern Warfare two side by side, both of us getting that OLED and both of you are getting that experience. And you know, with you know, with today's modern day hardware to be able to push that and then have it look incredible, that's something really actually only OLEDs and then monitors like this are capable of. So, right. Yeah, exciting. Sorry, I just I just need a moment because like the more we talk about this, the more I need it right now. Yeah, I think that let's let's talk a little bit about one of the other specs that I like, which is the 240 millihertz yep. uh, megahertz refresh. So the 240 megahertz is nice. Uh, sorry, 240 hertz. I'm sorry, megahertz. That would be impressive. <laughs> 240 hertz refresh. <laughs> we're, yes, just we're the first. It. We're the first it's, monitor it's... that can can change uh, the space time <laughs> continuum. Uh, 240 hertz. I apologize for misspeaking. 240 hertz refresh on a, a a big OLED monitor is actually pretty impressive, right? Yes. Before now, you've seen those specs down on you know 24 inch, 27 inch LCDs. Um, and some really, really high-end crazy things, but 240 hertz on an OLED is pretty good. Well, I mean, and that's the thing is like, you know, I, I, I 
we're talking to many of the eSport pros, like the, there are those players who need that kind of smooth refresh rate. Right. There are those players who need that to be competitive. And it, you know, whether that's your tryhards who pretend, but then there are the ones who really honestly, they notice a difference between 120, 140, 165, and 240 right. hertz, right? And now to have the hardware that we have to push uh, these resolutions at that speed is massive. Right. And so now you have gamers who can enjoy, use, like I said, use a single monitor to play the games, and then at the same time, and uh, play the games they love. Valorant, uh, CSGO, Rainbow Six, all high refresh rate. They're getting the best images and the best ability to you know, target those small pixel players instantaneously, and then get done, they're finished, they're gonna relax. Now they're gonna load up a little Cyberpunk, curve the monitor, and have a good go. And oh, then- Cyberpunk's a good one. It's not just- that too. It's also the people who are like myself, right? Like I'm a content creator, right? I'm, we're editing videos. We're making stuff. We have really accurate color with OLEDs. Then we get finished. It's five o'clock. You know, we've done our spreadsheets, which look, which look fantastic. I mean, come on. Nobody does it. Nobody's going to argue Excel on an OLED doesn't look good. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean there is, exactly. there is one guy right now at Microsoft or some, some businesses like, oh yeah, this is a moment for me. I can just imagine <laughs> his boss going, Roby, these spreadsheets, phenomenal work. He's gonna be. And like, he's like, you know, the secret sauce, yeah. the flex, the flex, monitor. the flex gaming yeah, monitor. He's gonna, be, he's gonna be like, Tom, you got. We you actually come in can't. Here. We can't guarantee your spreadsheets will look any better with this. But they, I can guarantee you that when you are in flat mode, you will get. Thir you know, 21 by 9 aspect yeah. ratio of ultra-wide spacing, which, as a spreadsheet nerd, is actually really useful to have that extra uh, real estate, I guess. And the other thing, too, is, like, we're also surrounded by video editors. I mean, uh, yeah. let, me, let me just tell you, timelines with ultra-wides oh, make such a massive difference. And then you have the color correction next to it, and you can look at it. Is, it is awesome. But then you're done. All your, all you, you guys start to, you start to go to your perspective corners. You curve that monitor, and then you're playing flight. You know, Microsoft Flight Sim, where you're getting like that entire real world, and it looks incredible. You're flying by Mount Rainier or over the Great Wall of China, and you're getting that immersion in that 747 or in that F-18 or being Maverick. That is what the curve basically adds to that after you're done with your spreadsheets. And then there's that one guy who's just literally like, I curve for spreadsheets too. It's just I'm spreadsheeting everywhere. <laughs> you know the thing that I like uh, about the 45 inch aspect ratio too, or the 45 inch size too, is that when you are in, you know, it sounds huge, right? A 45 inch TV is a big TV, but yeah. that's a 16 by nine. When you talk 45 inches, you're going corner to corner. So it's actually not that much taller than kind of a 27 inch monitor, right? It's not that much bigger than a 27 or 32 inch screen uh, from a vertical perspective. So it doesn't take up a cumbersome amount of desktop space visually, but it still offers you way more usable real estate. I, I know a lot of people over the last few years that have gone from, you know, their dual 16 by nine setup to a single ultra wide, 21 by nine or something like that. And I've noticed that, you know, even myself, I've been thinking about doing that. But the challenge for me is I have a, a work monitor, uh, which is, you know, really good color accuracy and I use it for reviewing, you know, packaging and stuff here. Uh, but I also have a gaming monitor, which is, you know, the Xenion 165 Hertz uh, screen right there. So I use that one for gaming and I use the other one for color accuracy and my, that's my 4K screen. But this is like, I might just replace both of them with this because it's phenomenal. If I can get, you know, these guys to turn the other way and I can take this one and leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really nice to have just one single thing on the desk that does all of that, and you have all the same, uh, you know, similar desktop space. And so that's the thing is like we've 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 kind of we've kind of uh, we've kind of elucidated on a ton of different um, specs and stuff. But we should probably like do a good job of kind of bringing it all like tightly in because it's not just 240 hertz. You also right. got that 0.03 millisecond response time, nice. which is also very critical. Really good. Uh, you've got 800 R. You can do 1600 R. You can yep. go all the way flat, right? And then what, what about the inputs? Like what, what can we plug into this thing? So you've got HDMI obviously, okay. uh, which you got HDMI 2. You have the DisplayPort, I think it's DisplayPort 1.4 on there. Um, and then you have obviously your standard kind of USB and, and things like that for the USB hub. The nice thing about this is though, the stand is uh, all got all the electronics in it, right? Because you can't bend the yep. PCB. So yeah, yeah. on most LCDs or most monitors, the PCB is in the screen itself. Yep. Um, but in this one, we put all that stuff in the stand so we could bend it, which okay. gives you the flexibility to put front connectors on those ports too. So the stand actually have some USB and headphone jack on the front of it too. So if you want to just, you know, use it to charge your phone or plug in a USB device like your mouse or keyboard, you can plug it right into the monitor right there, which is really nice. So you have that on the back, but also on the front in this case, which is, is a really nice setup, I think. And then rumor is Elgato Stream Deck 
Deck integration? There will be some Elgato Stream Deck integration coming forward. That's coming pretty soon. Uh, uh, you guys will see that. <laughs> I think that what we've seen with our, our previous Xenion monitors that we've launched yep. is that people really like the you know the the tie-in of the IQ software. Yep. Um, one of the things that drove me nuts about old monitors that you had to use the the stupid little button behind it. Yes. And, learn, and every vendor had ten different methodologies, right? Yeah. You you know LG did this one, and then you know whoever else did this other one, and whoever else did this other one, and you'd press this little thing on the back, and sometimes they'd have a joystick, and sometimes they'd have five buttons yep. where you had to press them in a you know secret code, yep. like it's the Goonies and you're trying to get out of Up, a dungeon. Down, or down, left, right, left, right. Right, exactly, <laughs> just to change the refresh. <laughs> um, but it's your life. Wait, but, how did but that when we did the Xenion monitor, one of the things the team did that was brilliant was they said, what if, you know, you've got this huge computer in front of you, we have this IQ software that we tie into it, what if you could just change all those settings in the software yep. in IQ? And that's great. I use it all the time on my Xenion monitor at home yep. to go in and change gaming mode to movie mode or whatever, and it's done in seconds. I don't have to, you know, think about the cumbersome joystick thing, which, by the way, to be fair to the Xenion guys, the little joystick behind the monitor is really intuitive compared to some. Yep. But IQ is even better. You just click yep. on it and go. Exactly. So content creators, come here, come here. Let's just let's get in close real quick. Think about this. You're sitting there, you're streaming. You're basically starting to play a game. You're playing your Valorant on your monitor. I mean, again, we all know, right? Like you have your settings for your brightness. It's daytime. You've got your brightness down a little bit. You're sitting there and you're playing your games, right? Then as it starts to get dark, you're getting into Callisto Protocol or any other scary game. You push on your stream deck. The brightness goes up. You're, you're ready to play at any point in time. You're not fiddling with anything. Everything is right there. And on top of that, it looks absolutely amazing. And what you're doing is you've got your wide angle, your people are there, and all of a sudden you're just flexing your monitor, and then just those sub points are driving in because you've just flexed hard on your entire audience, and they want more of that tech so they can have more critical moments like that. That is what you enable right there. So talking about content creators for a second, let me bring my specsmanship back in. <laughs> there we the go. specsmanship of this is that content creators care about color accuracy, yeah, right? Exactly. So we do have 100% of the sRGB color uh, space, the color gamut. Um, we also have 98.5 of DCI-P3. So that is really good accuracy. We also want people to know that this monitor does do HDR. Uh, the OLED spec for HDR is still in process as of the time of filming this. So we will have uh, the HDR spec being certified and ratified pretty quickly here, and we'll let you guys know exactly where that ranks, but the OLED HDR spec is still so new that they don't really have it set up for monitors correctly yet, so we're getting that ratified now, and we'll let you guys know what it is. I also we'll put it on screen if we have it by the time. I also want to talk about one other thing, because I know this is something, as somebody who spends a lot of time talking to users about tech and gaming, is people are concerned about OLEDs, right, and yep. gaming on an OLED. They're like, what about burn-in? And the best thing about you guys partnering with LG is that this comes with the LG burn-in protection, right. right? So they are so confident with pixel shifting and all of the technologies that they have that you will not have an issue. This has right. three-year burn-in protection. Right, I, I have, uh, you know, this is gonna sound, you guys are not gonna believe this because I'm biased, but I actually, before we even dealt with LG on this product and came up with this product, I purchased an LG OLED for my, my living room, and I've got both an Xbox Series X and a PS5 out there, and my kids game on it all the time, and my kids will just walk away from Minecraft for hours and yeah. forget, and I'm not even home, right? And my wife's doing something else, and I come home, and like Minecraft's been sitting there with that screen on for hours. And my first thought was, oh my god, I have a my you know, ruined. I have a fifteen hundred dollar OLED TV. <laughs> what have they done to me? But it has never had an issue. The the LG specs that they have with, like you said, the pixel refresh and stuff, and the 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 OLED care is really well done on it. So I'm I'm very confident that you have no problems. If my kids can't kill my TV you will have no problems gaming And on the this. best thing about it, you have the protection regardless, right? right? So even if there is an issue, it's easy to get fixed and taken care of with Corsair's like excellent support, right? right? Which is pretty much just, I think there's like a phone that you get with the monitor that goes directly to your <laughs> right. office. Right, you get a little red telephone like in the old <laughs> Batman TV show and you pick it up and you actually get me. Yeah. It, it, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, if it's off hours, I might give you an impolite comment, but, there... <laughs> but I will still a processed in RMA. <laughs> And on top of that, once it's fixed, he'll come to your house and hug you. Yeah, hug is guaranteed. A word. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing will say. George, give me a hug. Just, just you feel it. Feel it right here. Oh, oh, my, oh my gosh, that was a Wait, moment. Did you guys hear that on the mic? Shutters right there. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the screen itself. So okay. one of the things someone always asks whenever you launch a new monitor is. 
is it glossy or matte? Oh finish? yeah, it's a great question. This one being a curved screen, uh, we wanted to go with the kind of anti-glare reflection. So it's got a really nice anti-glare reflection, it's semi-matte. So it's not a super glossy finish. You're not gonna have any nonsense of you know 19 reflections. Um, almost all curved screens have some level of a matte finish. Um, this one, especially because you can curve it back and forth, is is I think it's like a 35% anti-glare if I remember right. Right, nice, okay. And then the other two is that I do wanna talk and highlight a little bit, like you were talking about getting that HDR in, but HDR is actually a very important thing, especially for those of us who really enjoy single player games, right? Yeah. Like when you think about looking at Forza Horizon, you're just looking up yeah. at the clouds, like, and on an OLED, that makes a massive difference. Again, the same thing exists also people are gonna watch movies on this. Like OLEDs are that kind of technology. So mm -hmm. even to get to watch some of the your HDR content on any of your favorite platforms, any favorite streaming platforms, it's going to look so much better. So having that HDR support, having that fast millisecond response time, having that first, that really fast refresh rate, all of those inputs, right. the ability to flex, complete immersion. All I'm gonna say is if I had a mic right now, it'd just be like- Drop, yeah. FreeSync Premium and G-Sync compatible. So you guys can choose that one as well. So it is great for people who are about you know that kind of variance of, of frame rate that you want to have the refresh tied to that I think that's really useful so we have 45 inches of OLED awesome that you can flex from it right. up to 800 R up to 800 you've got 240 Hertz 0.03 millisecond response time you've got true blacks you've also got the burn-in protection you've got a, a like a boatload of ports and just sheer awesome in game what else is there to say Honestly, you pretty much nailed it, man. I mean, that's that's it. Right? Nothing. That was I mean, the point. We can talk about the incredible features, the incredible refresh, and the gray to gray and the color accuracy and all that stuff. But the real thing that this thing does differently is that flex, right? Yeah. So you can have both a curved monitor and a flat monitor on your desk in the same spot now. You don't have to worry about deciding when you buy yeah. it. You buy this one and do both of them. Um, and you know what? Like we said, some games are just better experienced with a curved and some are better experienced with flat. Now you don't have to make that call and suffer the inadequacies of an inferior monitor technology. Now you have the optimal monitor test. Essentially, so. you've got three monitors right. in one that can do anything, right? right? And yeah. look great doing it all. Right. Even for Tom the Spreadsheet Guy. Tom the Spreadsheet Guy. Speaking of Tom the Spreadsheet Guy, I think he's in the chat. Uh, let's let's take a quick break and let's ask the chat you know, what they have for us. Maybe they have some questions we didn't hit on or oh, maybe yeah. we can give them some, some heads ups uh, on some other features. So what do you say? I say that's awesome. All right, so take a quick second. We'll be right back in a change of scenery maybe. Hey guys, welcome to the Q&A section of the video. We're going to do some uh, answers for you and, and go through some of your most common questions in the chat. Uh, one of the things that I did want to call out before we start that, though, is that we do have a pre-order available on Corsair.com slash flex. So you can go there and buy the monitor. It'll ship within the next 30 days, two to three weeks, hopefully. And you guys will be able to game in 2023 in uh, ultra wide curved screens. So that's cool. Also, there's a live uh, a giveaway at live.corsair.com. So the giveaway is one of the flex monitors and also some peripherals, really nice K100 Air. Uh, check that out at live.corsair.com. Hey, Roby, how you doing, man? What's up, guys? Uh, you know, I really appreciate all the uh, kind things in the chat. Thank you for saying I look very handsome. I appreciate that, you guys. George is definitely the better looking of the two of us, though. I'm just, I, I got to say, especially wearing those, work sweet, this is just natural. <laughs> wearing those sweet virtuoso headsets right there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so let's start with some of the questions. I did see a few people ask, I think, uh, let's see if I can remember. I got Blade Office 69. It is Watts uh, Alkarian, uh, probably butchered that pronunciation, uh, about the visa mount capability of this. So I wanted to get ahead of that uh, right away. So first things first, most of the electronics for the flex, because the monitor itself bends, are in the stand, the vertical part of that stand. So you can take the foot off the bottom, but you can't take the stand itself off the back of the screen because that's where the electronics are. So so it does not work with standard visa mount technology stuff. Uh, we are working on a potential solution for that. And we, uh, I'm sure the community will have a bunch of modifications for it. Uh, but as of right now, no, it is not 100% visa mount compatible. So that is one thing I wanted to start off with. Let's see, what else we got in the chat here? Roby, you have one in front of you. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a yeah, pretty, uh, it's a, the stand is wide, but it's very thin. The depth of it front to back is pretty small. Yeah, yeah. No, let's just let's just do it for the crowd, though, right? We need that crowd pleasing moment, right? Just to, just yeah. to, you had to do that once on the stream, right? Like you have to show 
the the bendable right and uh yeah so uh 65 inches people are asking what the what the dimensions are it's 65 inches 240 hertz 0. 40, 3 45 inches. 45 inches yeah sorry 45 inches it's 97 yeah. inches sorry 45 inches we don't, uh, want, we don't want to add 20 inches to this and have some guy come <laughs> wait a minute hold on i was going to put this in my living room no it's a 45 inch it's 45 inches yeah 240 yeah. hertz 0. 0.3 millisecond response time right and then uh, all the great uh color stuff too right maybe we should just go through that real quick george what are what are the specs let's let's go official okay let's see let's start off with the i don't want to read a spec sheet for you guys but the the critical ones it's a 45 inch ultra wide uh you know uw ultra wide qhd uh it is a you know 34 40 by 14 40 pixels so people asking why not 4k uh the reason is is because we wanted to do 240 hertz refresh first um just like when we first launched our first gaming monitor we didn't start with uh you know the the 4k screens because we felt most people want a higher refresh 1440 screen with really good color accuracy and stuff like that again this is an oled panel so it's an oled uh which is something that a lot of people are missing too um it's not just a standard lcd it's a really nice oled panel that is 1440 uh, ultra wide, which is great for that. Uh, 240 Hertz is also great, especially um, for me, I noticed that, I don't know if everyone has this problem, but on some curved screens, when they're lower refresh, I actually kind of get a little bit of motion sickness because of the, the immersion on it. Um, with the high refresh of this, I had no problems at all. I was I played uh, through The Witcher for uh, a little while in some of the games and it was not an issue. So um, I don't know if that's just me. It could be a subjective and it's anecdotal. So I don't want to say that you won't get motion sickness, but it may reduce it for some people. So it helped me for a lot for sure. Um, let's see other specs. Uh, it does curve from flat all the way up to 800 R. That's pretty nice. Uh, so some of those things that are uh, out there, you guys see, you know, um, 1600s or something like that. Uh, we can go all the way down to 800, which is really cool. Uh, HDR and, and rating. That, and that's, that, an, that's an important part though, George, is right? Because the other thing too is like even, so we went and showed people this and we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. But the thing is, is the fact that you actually have that adjustability, right? Like you're not stuck in either one of them. And even for that right. motion sickness, you can slightly pivot out to 1600R, et cetera right to find that one that works best for you and that's the kind of flexibility <laughs> i just i just did the plan where it didn't mean to but that's the kind of flexibility that you have with this uh in terms of gaming and and, and the fact that you don't need to have three monitors or two monitors on your uh, on your uh, desk to multitask you can literally just move and uh use this the way that you want for both productivity and gaming which is huge i mean that's it's such a big deal yeah um specifically let's talk about what games let's talk to the chat let's ask the chat for this what games and what products would you prefer to use the game uh, to use the, the the monitor in curved format right so like for me driving games are a no-brainer like i'll play horizon 5 in curved every single time i think that is an ideal situation for it i also prefer uh, single player FPS, I like the curved screen. So Far Cry, uh, things like that. I really like curved screen for single player, but I do go to flat for when I play CSGO or Valorant or something like that. What about you? Yep. Uh, yeah, for me, it's like flight sim, right? Like that's a huge one, right? The other thing too is we showed this off to a, a bunch of sim racing guys. And so we checked it out in, you know, for any of the sim racing, whether that's Forza, you know, rumor is, you know, we got Gran Turismo coming out. So anything that creates that immersion. And then Callista Protocol was uh in a good way and in a bad way more immersive in a bad way in the fact that i had to change my pants a couple of times but in a good way in terms of i had a really good time and how just how good that game looked um so uh very very yeah i love the, the thing was is that you know uh, you know the feedback that we've kind of seen is that people feel it's gimmicky but then when you actually use it and you and you move between the two you're just like, why didn't this exist before? And uh, I'm I'm grateful to LG and Corsair for actually for actually making it because it's it's really dang cool when you actually have one. <laughs> yeah, I saw someone in the chat, uh, No Man's Sky. Uh, that's a oh, great yeah. one for curved for curved. No Man's Sky is fantastic. Um, obviously Forza, like I mentioned, flight sims, like you said, um, I think that, uh, if you played the, I haven't seen this a lot, cause I guess a lot of people don't play fighting games on PC. Um, but when you're playing like Mortal Kombat or street fighter or something where you're playing competitive fighting game, I like flat better for that. I think it's, it's, you know, better and sports games like, um, Madden or FIFA or something. I like flat a little bit better for that or more appropriately, I guess not completely flat but like a very light curve i like to I, I would rather it not be all the way to 800 r for that i would go a little bit flatter um which again is the one of the benefits of flex is that 
you know, you don't have to have the full 800 R curve for every single game, right? You can kind of tweak it based on what game you're playing. Um, but for, you know, Excel and PowerPoint and stuff, I'm going to have it flat for that. Uh, let's and the see. other thing that's so good, honestly, as well, George, is like um, the fact that, you know, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll find something with the tech like this where there'll be some sort of sacrifice in terms of just the quality of the panel. And so, you know, spoiler alert for folks who are coming out there and, you know, we, we review a number of monitors and we've given some bad scores and we've given some good scores. Like we even had a little bit of a mix on, on, on your other Xenion monitor. But the thing was, is that this one, it was like, we like little to no ghosting, like the, the panel looks incredible. Like people would go in and, and like uh, see it for the first time and they were blown away at how good it looks. And then it bends Right. So to have the whole package in something like this is also the other thing too. There is no sacrifice. And then when you stack that with the stuff you guys have coming out for IQ, this really is an amazing product end to end, uh, which is hard, right? Like this, like it, it really, and I, you know, I know the reviews will come out the same way as like you're getting the entire thing. Well, oh, if you were able to pick one of these up. Yeah. Uh, Rory, uh, Rory can asked, it, can it click into specific R curves? Uh, this is kind of neat. You can click it at any level you want and stop it anywhere you want. Uh, and the left and right are independent. So you can curve just one side if you want, uh, which is kind of neat. So yeah. uh, Rory can, there you go for that. Uh, I did see somebody ask about the life cycle. How many times can I bend it? Um, it can be, uh, the bending life cycle is over 10,000 cycles. So um, if you were going crazy and bending it a thousand times a day because you got nothing else to do and you were knocking it out, you know, what would that be? Something like 50 times an hour. Uh, <laughs> you're just knocking it back and forth every second. Uh, yeah, you could, you could do it for 10,000 days. Uh, but realistically for 10 days, but realistically that's somewhere in the neighborhood of five years of typical use, uh, at least, uh, so over five years for typical use. So I don't think most people will be bending it, uh, 10,000 times in the time that they, they have this monitor. Uh, let's see. One of the other questions we had was about, uh, fun time with souls asked, how are you addressing potential burn? And this is the thing that a lot of people worry about with led uh, or OLED rather, sorry. Uh, and we do have a lot of burn in prevention features. So some of them being the brightness stabilizer and the oval pixel refresh and, and obviously the image retention stuff, uh, oval runs a recycling pixel in an over pattern around the screen minute by minute. So it keeps the pixels from, from burning in. Um, and then when you power off the unit, uh, after eight hours of use, um, the image retention will run uh, every eight hours of use. So whenever the eight hour clock hits, you turn the monitor off and it'll run an image retention thing to keep it going. And then brightness stabilizer keeps the brightness under standard desktop experience kind of limited so you don't have the high burn-in problems. Um, LG is really at the forefront of this, I think. And I think that's one of the reasons we partnered with them on this. Um, their OLED tech for TVs is in you know my completely obviously unbiased opinion the best out there um i have an lg oled tv myself and i bought that before we even did this like i mentioned in the the stream earlier um and uh i've had no problems with burning even my kids leaving minecraft on for literally hours without anything going on so it's phenomenal um and then we did and you see... also get that three-year oled burn-in protection that's yeah, the other thing get... too right like that, yep. That's, I mean, even though you're going there, like they're so confident in their OLED, in their burn in stuff that you actually are protected for three years because of it. Right. So that, that in and of itself, it's like you have all that tech plus you actually have the peace of mind knowing that if there ends up being an issue, uh, they'll, uh, they'll take care of it, which is huge. Yeah. Yep. I think that that's, uh, that's something that peace of mind for people there, three years of, of burn in and zero dead pixel policy and stuff like that. So anybody who's worried about that, um, plus, 240 hertz refresh is not too bad from a performance perspective for sure. Uh, one guy asked, let's see here, who was it? Uh, Dennis or uh, Desi Lunsford, what prevents it from sliding on the desk when you bend it? A heavy base or something? Yeah, actually, it is. It is a fairly heavy base, but it's also got uh, a really uh, grippy pads underneath it to keep it from sliding. So uh, the foot and the the pads underneath the the foot itself. Um, will kind of make sure that it, it's got an anti-grip texture on the bottom so that it doesn't slide when you, you pull it back and forth. You'll, you'll also, you know, I will say this, having had this and probably bent this particular monitor probably a hundred plus times already, like there is a technique that you'll get used to as you get into it. It's not hard to bend, but you'll kind of, I mean, given when you have the grippy at the bottom, literally you'll find a way that it just doesn't slip, right? Like you might, like, as you kind of get used to it, you got to figure it out. But 
for the most part, it's pretty quick to get in there. It's really intuitive. And then it just doesn't move after that. So it's, yeah. it's, you just got to get used to it. First, you got to get over the fact that you're bending your monitor. And then once you get through that, then after that, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. We did get a couple of people asked, it's like, Hey, do you need something like a, like a 4090 to be able to produce, uh, to be able to power this? Uh, honestly. So we've, we've checked a, a, a number of uh, GPUs with this. Uh, and we, uh, 3060 TI, uh, also with the thing is, is with like DLSS and XESS and FSR, um, a lot of those games, you know, because we have the GPU manufacturers making games that, uh, making tech that makes games, uh, C GPUs jump, uh, punch above their weight class. Uh, you, you don't actually need the craziest hardware, obviously with the, you know, with the price of this, right? Like, you know, some of these people are going to pair these with, uh, you know, 3070s, 3070 TIs, but those yeah. are absolutely fine for yep. 3440 by 1440. So yeah, I know that that's was a actually, question that came up. That us. is another reason that I think that, um, you know, I know that for the super high-end guys, 4K gaming at 120 plus, you know, there's a bunch of guys doing that. But realistically, I think a lot more people game at the 3070 and 3060 TIs level than at the the you know 4090 level um and i think that uh that's one of the reasons i personally game on a 1440 screen rather than a 4k screen i have a 4k screen right here and a 1440 screen right here and one's for work and one's for gaming i almost always game on the 1440 screen um and that's a standard 32 inch xenion uh, qhd the first gen version of it uh sammy asked in the chat by the way chat you guys are doing a great job these questions are phenomenal i'm actually really <laughs> stoked with how good the engagement is on this and the the questions are legitimately technical and stuff so nice work on that chat i, I appreciate it um sammy asked are there any safeties in, in place to prevent it from bending backwards uh yeah you can't bend it backwards there's a really strong steel plate in there i mean technically if, if you really wanted to put the work in and you know get some leverage and a long enough lever you can bend it backwards and it'll break but i would not expect anyone doing that on accident it would be it would be about the same as bending a regular monitor backwards like it would it would take that level of strength maybe even more uh so yeah you're not going to bend it backwards on accident it's going to be on purpose um and probably and if you guys want to see if you guys and I'll, like i'll take a, a couple seconds but if you guys want to see what we did and, and see like the whole thing and 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 people's reactions to it so you can see all like all the whole kind of flex and everything we actually just released a video um that we're going to show here in a second uh that you guys are basically can go check out where we actually took this and showed real people out in the wild and let them try this over at a Whoa. game store here in seattle washington and you can actually see during that you'll see the bars that are behind it this. and stuff like that but i mean you had kids bending this you had adults bend bending this you had a, you know a ton of different individuals as they were acting not only to the curvature itself but also to the fact that um the screen looked so incredible so go check it out ruby tech dot com slash youtube uh it's a great way to see just you know a lot of times like you'll have videos or, or or things like this from companies but to go watch regular folks um just go and see this and experience and use the bend for the first time is a great way to just kind of see just how mind-blowingly good this monitor looks and how much fun they got they they uh they had gaming on it the other thing too that's actually really nice about it as well is that you know we had a lot of people are like i want this for christmas and that's just telling you know, because they, they weren't good. They couldn't win one. They just enjoyed the fact that this monitor looked that good. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, for the bending stuff, there's some great shots in there of showing the mechanism so you can see that you can't put it backwards. Okay. Uh, While well, you did a plug, I'll do a plug. Remember, guys, you can go to uh, live.corsair.com to enter the giveaway so you can win one of these monitors and the peripherals. You can also pre-order one of these monitors right now on corsair.com slash flex. So uh, flex on us and go uh, drop a couple bucks and buy one of these. <laughs> Nice, George. I was, I was, I was reaching was, for that, man. That I was, was reaching. That was you. Um, <laughs> reaching for the jokes. Uh, how fast is that? the video? <laughs> how fast is the video input switching from PC to console or work laptop? Why don't, hey, you have one in front of you. Why don't you show them on the front there uh, the uh, input switch buttons there? Yeah, so it's a, there. The input switch button is here. You know, it's funny. It's that's one thing that I haven't played. With. I mean, like again, in terms of switching back and forth, it's nice and fast. Yeah. Obviously, I have only the game plugged in, but that the the you know oh there you go there's display port yeah. you know and so yeah it switches very 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 fast right because i just yeah. switch between hdmi and display port that quick and and again this is uh i know that you guys aren't going to believe me because i work here but this is one <laughs> of my favorite features of our product like this is that the guys who are building these things are tired of all the same things that you guys are tired of with monitors which is like having to go through nested menus you can't see so they put the buttons right on the front so you can just you know press the button to switch inputs 
instantly. You don't have to worry about going through 17 nested menus. You just reach over and press a button. So it's like having, it's almost like having kind of a built-in KVM almost, right? Like it's kind of similar to that. It's, it's right there. Um, so let's see, we have, it does not have a KVM no, but it does have multiple inputs. So you can kind of uh, treat it that way. Yeah, I was, somebody was asking. Oh, it does, I'm sorry, I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I, I, it does have a KVM built in for two PCs. I am incorrect. It does have a KVM built in for two. I was going to get punched in the head by the product manager. Uh, <laughs> he actually lives like five miles from me. He's he's on his way over here right now, I'm sure. He's already, he's going over there with the like, he's, he's going to see like, I'll show you how to break a flex. <laughs> well, he got mad at me last time. I, I, I screwed up last time when I told him that, when I told people that the Voyager laptop doesn't have a fingerprint reader and he was, he, there was like a chat window with like nine, yes, it does is right. You know, So he was right about that. So um, by the way, the Voyager laptop does have a fingerprint sensor. Uh, so get yeah, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> but just so you guys know, uh, like to no, correct that from six a, months there's, ago, there's not a wearable version of this that you can wear as a hat. That uh, yeah, I can answer that question. I, <laughs> yes, I, you, I figured you, you should not wear this. Taking that one, George. <laughs> uh, it, it is. It is a. Uh, it is too heavy to wear as a hat for most people. If you have a very strong <laughs> neck, you could probably pull it off. Uh, let's see. Out. Is there a white version? We we can't talk about unannounced products, but probably not. Uh, I mean, if there's enough of you guys say, "Dude, we absolutely need a white version," then then we'll we'll look at it. But uh, I can't talk about what we can't talk about, obviously. But um, you look at the previously, we have not launched any white monitors yet. All of our Xenon monitors are, are the same colorway. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked if there's if there's the the screen is RGB. We don't <laughs> need more RGB, RGB than this. I the guess yeah. Thing. I guess every single pixel is RGB. RGB. So it's, it's already it's RGB. The whole thing. No, the stand. The stand does not have RGB lighting integrated or anything like that. So there's no RGB stand or accents to it or, or backlighting. Uh, but you can integrate uh, with IQ. Uh, shameless plug. You can integrate now uh, backlighting that we can put behind your monitors, like the LS100 kits and such. Um, and also, we now have uh, plugins for NanoLeaf and another thing like that. So we can work with Philips Hue. We can work with NanoLeaf. We can work with our own backlighting. Um, so there is no software that allows you to use more RGB. Uh, hardware in the industry than ours so if you don't uh have rgb lighting on the monitor stand uh but you do want to just buy philips u lighting or, or nano leaf you can still use iq to control it all yep exactly we, uh, it's like we were ready for that right here with the with the yeah. nano leaf rt right thanks there for thinking this, uh, through roby I, I really appreciate <laughs> your your dedication to the the cause here uh let's look through the stream <laughs> will george and justin sign the back if you win uh yeah i'll sign it i probably gonna they're probably gonna ship it from headquarters anyway so if you want <laughs> if not i'll sign a, a a photograph of not me but uh, one of our better looking employees I'll, I'll put someone i'll get a the photographer to take a picture of him and i'll sign on the bottom of it um yeah and then this i don't think they're probably gonna, gonna go to just hr to for it. that comment hr is probably gonna, gonna fly me out just already. to sign it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> uh Let's see what we got. Uh, okay, so since the LL series of fans stands for light loop, what does the QL stand for? Uh, quad loop. That's a, it's completely unrelated to this product, but um, <laughs> believe it or Answer not, the that's what QL anyway. stands for. That's, that is uh, from ZM Sapol. Uh, LL was light loop. It was two rings. And then when we put uh, front and back, two rings on each side. Uh, so now it's four rings. Uh, we were trying to think of a way to, to do it. And someone jokingly said, why don't I just call it QL for quad loop? And that's why it's called QL. So uh, anyway, the more you know. I saw, I, I've seen a couple of questions. People saw my video who were watching, they were talking about the Corsair one. Guys, you're reading too much into that Corsair one thing. I just said the Corsair one was nice with this because this takes up a lot of desk space. It's just a nice small PC. There was, don't read into the new or anything, just saying Corsair one works really well with this. And we were, when we originally had done the video, we were using that. Um, but then we wanted to show off really cool other Corsair hardware, so we built a different PC. So that was the whole point of that. Don't read any more into it. We just say, like, it, it looks good with this. And they actually have it on their, their site that they show it next to it. So that's the whole point. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's go through the chat. Let's see what else we got. Uh, quad loop. Okay. Uh, rotational feature. No, sorry. It does not rotate. Uh, so sorry about that. It is a horizontal, ultra-wide screen. Um, but it does, you it could... does have good tilt. Right. Like yeah, you get a lot of, nicely. you get a lot of tilt there. So, I mean, like there, that was something we ended up showing off pretty well too. And people were pretty impressed. So if you're like taller um, or, you know, you're playing with it on the back of a truck, George, you know, like some people do uh, then uh, you know, it's, it's actually really nice for that. Yeah. 
You saw, I saw a preview of your video where you took it to uh, that uh, store and had a bunch of random people just kind of use it for the first time. Uh, what were some of your favorite reactions from that video? It's a teaser for your content that's coming up here. Yeah, and I mean, the, the best thing was is that, I, and this is, you know, when I when I'd originally talked to you guys about doing that video was just because it's not until you see it, and I, you know, I kind of alluded to that even in our, in our stream, we were talking about it earlier in the stream, is the first time you bend it, but, you know, we talked, we had a bunch of kids who were really excited about this, who, you know, apparently the parents watched the show and stuff like that. And then when they went in there and they bent it for the first time, but the kids in terms of like this the little girl gets in there and she just wanted to get like right here in the center and she wouldn't leave. And it was funny, you know, it's hard to capture that stuff on video, but she wouldn't leave because she was so immersed by what was happening. Um, and so it was just really neat to see people react and then get excited because, like I said, they saw how good the panel looked, but then they started to think about the um, application of being able to uh, to also play the games that they want in the in the way that they want. Um, and then a lot of adults really excited about the productivity, shifting from productivity and then moving into gaming afterwards, which was like a huge part of this. And just knowing that they have this one monitor that can do everything. Right. And then again, you know, you're watching here. That's funny enough. This. I mean, she was so excited about just how dang good it looked. But watch, I mean, she she walks up to this and she's just like, oh, my, that's that's the face right there. And then it's just easy to bend back and forth. Right. So it was yeah. super, super cool. I remember the first time I actually saw this this monitor or the prototype and not this one, because uh, the prototype had like different stands and stuff. But uh, uh, it was under a blanket in our product manager's office. Uh, and I was like you know, is this something I'm allowed to look at? And he kind of looked around to make sure no one else was there. Like, yeah, I'll show it to you. And he showed it to me. I was like, this is cool. This is super cool that you can bend your own monitor. Um, and then he told me to be really careful because it was a prototype. He didn't want me to break it. But uh, obviously it works fine now. And and we've seen a bunch of them around the office and they, they, they actually look really cool. Um, the first time you actually get to see uh, a game on that curved screen, I was really impressed with it. For sure. It was it was yep. really nice to see in person. So I, I totally understand why, you know, random people who've never seen it before are impressed by it. And again, a lot of people are still on standard LCDs, right? A lot of people still have LCD TVs or LCD monitors or whatever crappy laptop they got on Black Friday. Uh, and like, you know, when you're comparing that to a high end OLED, the, it's night and day. Like the the difference in, in contrast ratio alone is is staggering, you know? Yeah. And it's funny because somebody was saying, Ion Master says, hey, I've never used a curved monitor before, to be honest. The thing was, is that we had some folks who, when we were, they were trying this monitor, right, had, had the same experience. But then when they were playing Flight Sim or Forza Horizon with it curved, they were like, oh, I can see why people like this, right? And a lot of times it's because they feel limited, you know, and this came up in conversation is because they felt limited if they bought a curved monitor, they were stuck that way. And this one gave that the, them the opportunity to not have to be stuck that way. Um, and so I think that's one of the things that's unique about this is that now you, th with the flexibility of this, you're not just, you're not stuck and curved or flat. You can actually move between and create that immersion. And at the same time within it's not, you're also not locked to certain degrees. These all are bendable and movable in uh in a in one way yeah it's, so. it's almost like uh it's not digitally locked to a certain you know r ratio it, you can just kind of decide where to stop it yourself uh some other questions from there any eta on shipping out for the pre-orders about two to three weeks so you guys should see them ship hopefully before end of year uh and if not in very very early january they should ship out uh so that's cool uh, uh zm sapol uh, asked there is no third leg in the back you can pretty much just push it right to the wall it's a small uh it's a little like maybe two inch two and a half inch uh segment that has kind of a a, a foot just to prevent it from tilting backwards so it's not nowhere near as big as the ones in front uh yeah oof, don't drop it yeah see it's like yeah it's a very small little thing in the back there yeah um, just to keep it balanced but it'll go pretty close to the back of the wall. You can put it within a couple inches of the wall there. And it's not, it's um, not heavy either. Right. Like you can see, I was just able to move it and stuff like that. Well, not so, for I mean, someone like, as shredded as you, Roby. Oh yeah, I, mean, I know. I mean, I not, work out. I've been, I've been flexing with this thing for the last, you know, a couple of weeks. And so it's, it's made me more ripped, but for the most part, it's, you know, we've actually carried it around. We've used it on the, you guys will see later. We've used it on the back of Ford lightning uh, and took it around for there. We carried it around and, and had it, people use it. It's, it's actually way less cumbersome than it, than you might think given its size. So. 
Okay, and one more question we saw from Absence of Logic. This is a good question. Will the winner of the giveaway still get the three-year warranty support for the monitor? Yes, you will still get the warranty. We're not going to give you the monitor and be like, hey, SOL, not our problem anymore. No, you get the monitor, you get the warranty for all the products that come with it, uh, it you know. Yeah, um, Roby, do you want to show oh, on the yeah. side where the handles can be hidden so that you can see that they don't always have to be seen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, this 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 doesn't stick out like this, right? You can't you can't do both. You know, some people are probably like, I don't want that, but no, you you you're, for you OCD folks um, or the people who you know want to, you can absolutely hide them um, and then you know go from there. So, yeah. That's true, because we do show a lot of the assets. We show the handles out to remind people what flexes. But yes, they can be hidden. You don't have to see them all the time, but they're always there, um, just like me. I'm always here. Um, someone asked, let's see who it is. Uh, Ma Magashi Saizen. I just absolutely brutalized what is probably a Japanese name, and I apologize to you <laughs> and the entire country of Japan for that. Uh, how durable is this panel? I figure that after a while, bending something back and forth, it will deteriorate in structure. We mentioned earlier, it does 10,000 use cycles. It's the same panel tech that they use in that big TV, the rollable TV that is like $100,000. So uh, it's not something that we just kind of like, hey, you, you know, it's it's a gimmick. It's This is something that LG has been working on for a very long time. And one of the reasons we partnered with them is, is this design. So, um, it's it's a very durable uh, product, and ten thousand use cycles is probably more than anyone will ever bend it. Uh, I think you guys will see only a few times. And and the other thing too that came up as well when we we were doing it is like the that kind of blew people's minds is that you know when you look at like stuff like the um, like foldable phones phones etc. Right, like there is no crease in this. Like you don't see any of that. Like the the bend is seamless. So there's nothing even when you're bending it. And we you know this has been bent a lot, and you don't see anything like that. Uh, from a wear and tear perspective. So all in all, it's got a clean, like clean panel look, um, regardless of what, however you bend it, whether it's 800R, 1600R, all the way flat. Okay. Um, we did get a question and I didn't, I, I thought I'd answered it, but I forgot that, uh, you know, we, I knew the answer. I didn't actually tell you guys. Um, someone asked us about HDR certification. Uh, we will be certified. We're working with the Blur Busters cert program and we're going to get on their new uh, real world gaming color accuracy and motion blur certs. Uh, we will be the world's first gaming OLED uh, Blur Busters certified monitor. So it will be certified HDR and, and we'll let you guys know as soon as we get that done. Uh, we're not going to be doing Visa display HDR. They're not uh, the same kind of measure of the gaming OLED and, and LCD. It was originally created for LCD. They don't really do a good job on OLED in our opinion. Uh, so we wanted to work with Blur Busters on that. But yes, it is an HDR screen. Uh, I believe it's a thousand nit. So uh, pretty solid. Uh, let's see here. I Does the unit come in one piece or is it set up like a traditional flat curve monitor by Psychomantis? Uh, Psychomantis asked that question. You've put one together, Roby. Yeah, no, it, it cuts. So the way that comes in the box is that it, it comes with just the back and then the panel, you lift it out and then you basically can just put the little feet, but it, it comes in this one unit with just adding the feet and the feet are added via one of those standard screws like at the nut, bottom. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like, that's, that's just a little screw and then you basically put it on. So pretty. Yeah, so it's very much it's very much like most monitors where you kind of take it out of the box and put the stand on it and you're done. It, it feels yep. pretty quick. Um, and it's very again, well packaged. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, and you don't need a tool or anything. It's just a, a hand tool on that. Someone yep, asked, Fun Time with Souls asked, uh, how surprised were you that Linus didn't break his review sample? We actually had to send Linus 11 of these. He broke the first 10. Uh, so he, I don't know if he's just throwing them off buildings or what he's doing, uh, catapults or something. Uh, no, no, uh, Linus is a good dude on it. I'm sure he didn't break it, uh, I hope. <laughs> uh, the, uh, somebody asked... Somebody asked, is it a power cord attached to a brick? And the, yes, it does have a brick. Okay. Um, let's see here. And we do, just so you guys are a reminder, just so people who just joined the chat recently, the giveaway is on the website and the live Corsair, live.corsair.com. Go there. You can do the giveaway right there. Uh, and then also you can pre-order today at corsair.com slash flex. So just a reminder for that. Let's see what other chat questions we have. Uh, there was a, does there was the base an, stand come off? It is not wall mountable. It's not visa mount. We talked about this at the beginning of the chat, but again, we've been doing this for 20 minutes now or 30 minutes. So probably some people that didn't get that part. It is not a visa mountable monitor because the electronics for the screen are in the vertical part of that base. So the foot does come off the bottom uh, and we are working on potentially doing some kind of clamp uh, thing that we can put out there for you guys. But uh, uh, you guys aren't going to be able to worry about um, a standard visa mount on this. It's not going to work on a big monitor arm uh, out of the box like this. Uh, so just a heads up, if you do need to visa mount it, 
not the product for you. We'll work on other products in the future. Uh, and we do have a, an adapter for desk mounting that we're working on now too. There was, a, there was an interesting question. And you know, this is always a review one because we thought about this when somebody talked about the review stuff is somebody said, why not DisplayPort 2.1? I will say that this isn't limited by DisplayPort at all, right? So yep. if you're looking at like, you know, 4K greater than 165 Hertz or 8K, but given this is 3440 by 1440, you don't need with DisplayPort 2.1 because there's nothing that you gain out of having it, right? So, it, you know, it does end up saving you money, et cetera, but they don't need it. So it's just, it's not, it's not, it wasn't necessary. I don't know if that's the answer, but I'm um, from a review standpoint. There's no, yeah, um, like we got. There's no limitation. So there's no point to DisplayPort 2.0 on a non 8K screen. It's it's yeah. you know it's it's yeah. like uh, uh, buying ten thousand dollar racing tires for a you know a five thousand dollar car or something like that. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so, so another but, question that came up is George and I, they said, have you guys lost weight? Yes. Because of the Xenion flex, it's, it's part of a new weight loss program uh, that you get as part of your, no, that's, it's, that's it's actually, actually <laughs> course.com slash flex today is for this monitor. And tomorrow it's our new workout regime. We're going to be doing that. Uh, so you guys will check that out. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, how can you cram that much power through that tiny cord? I don't, I'm assuming he's talking about the power brick. <laughs> So, so uh, guys, we're going to break this. So we've now ended this. We're now just going to go into an electrical engineering discussion. We're going to yeah, talk exactly. about voltages and how this works. Someone get a whiteboard. Let's talk about <laughs> yeah, it. Luckily, I became prepared today to talk about <laughs> how this Professor Roby. Goes. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What's, what else we got in the chat here? Um, can I pay you in bubble gum? Yeah. As long as it's not Fruit Stripe. Fruit Stripe is <laughs> gone in like five seconds. Uh, he hey, fruit stripe guys, get on it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's he, been 40 he years and your gum loses flavor in five <laughs> seconds. I can buy Orbit's gum or, or any other of other gums that are still flavorful 10 minutes after I start chewing it. Fruit stripe instantaneously gone. I, oh anyway, man, look at, look at. Thank you for Kevin coming to my TED in. talk. Kevin from uh, Origin PC CEO came in with the Pepsi points for the Harrier jet, right? Like the, <laughs> to be super clear, the full disclosure, no, you cannot pay with bubble yes. gum. And we're yes, going to be super neat because I know George yes, is legally, I'm so sorry. Up. Our legal counsel is freaking out right now. They're going to get a wheelbarrow full of gum and expect a monitor. No. Um, um, so absence of logic. Great question. Actually, the 21, he said, which, which one was your favorite one on this monitor? I will say, if you want to talk about the most, breath, most breathtaking flight sim, uh, the new flight sim looks incredible. So we did the, uh, we showed um, flying by Everest. Uh, and then the helicopter through New York uh, blew people's mind. So, I mean, and, like we have footage of that and, you know, the kids were like awestruck. So that one worked really well. And Forza Horizon is actually really great. Uh, also in 21, boy, 21 by nine. And then the last one is Callisto Protocol. So. Okay. That's, uh, so there's that. Uh, let's see. My favorite game to play in ultra wide is Forza Horizon 5. I, I, I know that there's race sim guys out there that are going to call me an arcade racer and they're right. I am an arcade racer. I don't want to play a simulated racing game. Uh, I don't re realistic laws of physics. I just want fun. And horizon is my version of that. So I I've played every Forza horizon version. I love Forza horizon and playing horizon five on 800 R is phenomenal. Um, somebody asked, let's see here. It was, he's asked this a couple of times and we ignored it the first time. So I want to be uh, Winchester's gaming lounge. Asking one less time so as not to spam, can you clarify the limited availability statements? Is it just the pre-orders that are limited or is the entire product limited? Uh, this is not a limited product. Uh, so we're just ramping up production. So it will be available forever. It's not like we're going to be uh, forever. It'll be, it's not planned to be like only available in 500 units ever or something like that. It's planned to be able to be sold for years. So we're going to keep the product. Uh, the problem is uh, as production ramps up, we may not be able to fill the demand right away. So what we have today will ship, will will sell, and then as we ramp production up, we'll be able to fulfill orders. So it's not uh, by limited quantities. We don't mean limited quantities forever. It's more like what we have today is what we have today, and once that's sold out, it'll have to wait for you know replenishment. Somebody was asking weight. Uh, it's three point five kilograms. Um, it's, it, which the is, whole, uh, it's more than that. It's it's twenty two pounds total, right? So oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I, I read that wrong. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, people are no asking problem. a bunch of people asking weight. Let's do, hey, so someone asked um, uh, to see how it actually bends. I think we have a pre-recorded does it bend video. Uh, Drake, <laughs> can we roll that? The Corsair Xenion Flex is a 45-inch, 240Hz ultra-wide gaming monitor with a bendable OLED panel that lets you adjust the curve of your screen from completely flat to an immersive 800R curvature and anywhere in between. 
Before adjusting the tilt and curve setting of the Xenion Flex, make sure that it's placed on a stable level surface. To adjust the tilt of the display, grab the bottom handle and tilt the panel to your preferred angle. To adjust the curve of the display, pop out the handles from both the left and right sides of the panel. Grab the handles and pull inward to start bending. You'll hear an audible click once you've reached the Xenion Flex's max setting. Once you've set your desired curve, let go of the handles and pop them back in. Flattening the panel is just as easy. Simply pop out the handles again and push outward. The panel will click again once you've reached its flattest setting. When used as a traditional flat panel monitor, the Xenion Flex lets you see everything on screen as intended. For example, productivity applications and content creation software where straight lines are ideal for working with as accurate of an image as possible. When curved, the display will more completely wrap and fill your field of vision, making it great for an immersive gaming experience at its maximum 800R. And of course, you can always set the Xenion Flex to a more subtle curve that fits your preferences while enjoying content or working on projects that span across the display. And that's it for setting the curve on the Corsair Xenion Flex Ultra Wide Gaming Monitor. Thanks for watching. So the answer to will it bend is yes, it bends. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, George. Alert. Yeah. Glad I <laughs> so was it sounds, able like, to... sounds like we're going to do a big recap. Should we just tell? Because it sounds like people are coming back in. They, they want to yes. know what's up, George. Why are we here? Okay. What's going on? So new guys that just joined the stream uh, because they don't know how time zones work or something, uh, whatever it is, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll go through it. This was the world's first bendable gaming OLED screen, uh, or monitor rather, and I think it's pretty dope. It's 45 inches uh, wide corner to corner. It's 21 by nine aspect ratio, uh, 1440p. So it's a uh, ultra wide qu uh, quad HD, 240 Hertz refresh, which is another critical element. Uh, I have seen G-Sync and FreeSync questions. Yes, G-Sync compatible, FreeSync premium. So you should be able to do that as well, no problem. Um, and uh, it is DCI-P3 up to 98.5% and 100% of the uh, sRGB colorway, uh, color standard. So that's the, the basics of what we're talking about today. Uh, no, it is not Visa mountable. Uh, and yes, it uh, has a three-year warranty and can do 10,000 cycles of bending. If somebody asked, is it max height on my desk? Yes, this is max. It, like, it doesn't go up and down. It, it does tilt, but it doesn't, like, it, you can't move the... The, the screen up and down. Okay, let's look at the chat. Um, so we've we've basically hit people over the head with this. Uh, let's open the chat <laughs> for a few minutes to see if anyone has any questions about any other Corsair stuff. Um, I mean, we've done all kinds of cool other products recently. We got all kinds of new stuff coming. Uh, if anyone else has any more Corsair questions outside of the the, the Xenion monitor, I'm open to that too now. So we've answered most of them. So Brad, we answered that, but yes, the three-year warranty, actually you have a separate three-year, and, and, and George can correct me, but you have a three-year burn-in uh, that happens as well. So it does protect against burn-in because that's how confident they are yep. with the tech to keep burn-in And zero on this dead monitor. pixel policy and all that, so. Fran okay, wants to know see. your Christmas wish. What's your Christmas, Christmas wish? wish? I used to say, uh, you know, stuff like peace on earth and the end of disease and stuff like that. But, uh, I really like an electric truck. That would be nice. Like, a uh, a, a Ford lightning or something. Maybe that would be cool. I think, I think that would be neat. I'd like to have one of those. Uh, we get, we have electric chargers at work and, and I only live 20 miles from the office. So I, it's a perfect situation for me, you know? Um, yeah, and I've seen your truck. That's right. Yeah, I have actually seen your truck. Yeah, no, I could, yeah. I could definitely, I could. It's definitely just a see regular old truck. It's just a regular truck. It it's runs on fossil truck. fuels like caveman technology now. <laughs> but I might uh, have something interesting my... for you. We could tease later, then, George. I got something interesting for you. We tease later. Right. Uh, somebody asked about Corsair PSUs. Yes, we do make power supplies. Um, what, what specifically? ATX 3.0. Oh, well, we will be talking about that uh, shortly. You'll see uh, Corsair's ATX 3.0 power supply stuff uh, in 2023. Uh, I can't get more specific about it, but yeah, obviously we're going to have ATX 3.0 at some point. There's no real point to it today uh, since nothing really needs it. Um, but yes, of course, as the world's most you know dominant power supply uh, company uh, with the, the biggest lineup out there, uh, we obviously are, obviously are going to be making ATX 3.0 power supplies at some point. Um, you guys will see it pretty soon. Uh, let's see here. Bottom iron mix. I was planning to upgrade to a higher wattage. Could I use the same Corsair Type 4 sleep cables that work on RM850 to power RMX1000? Yes, as long as they're the Type 4s, they should work fine, as long as you make sure that uh, Type 4 to Type 4. Um, I do want to make sure people know 
that you cannot mix our fully modular cables with other vendors fully modular cables do not try that if you had a seasonic or something and you switched to corsair or if you had an evg and you switched to corsair you switch all the cables get all the cables that we came with and again type 4 is type 4 so if your power supply is type 4 cables it'll work with type 4 cables no matter uh what um the exception being uh the on the high end power supply like an ax 1600i the wall cable uh the outlet cable is different because there's a different socket on it because powering 1600 watts from the wall is more than the standard uh connector can do so there's a heads up for that uh let's see what else do we have anything else in the chat no, it's actually, people seem to be like, you've done such a good job, George, that they're like, they're like, we know everything about everything. It's perfect. Yeah. This guy, the, the chat today was great too. I mean, I'll take the credit. Sure. It, it was all me. Um, but realistically, no, the chat was good. We had, uh, you know, very few uh, uh, annoying guys in the chat. Guys are asking legitimately good questions and technical questions that we can answer. And also some of the questions that, you know, are useful to people like, you know, visa mounting or HDR spec or, or resolution, things like that. So that's awesome. Um, I think it's been awesome to have a really, really in invested chat on Twitch and YouTube and, and the other yeah, places. So. I agree. Ter Terror Dome, I, I like this one. Let's 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 help Terror Dome out because he says, oh, yeah. "How can I explain a two thousand dollar monitor purchase to my family when my current dual monitor setup is sufficient for my work and gaming needs?" So this would be this would be mine. It'd be like, "Hey, honey, here's the deal. Like, you know, you know, my happiness matters. You know what I, you know what you know what I need. Uh, and the thing is, is that even though the dual monitor, the fact is, is that it's just not as immersive. And the only two is sometimes I might want to play games with the kids. And so being able to flatten it out." you know, and then be able to bring it back. You know, it's, it's all things that are just going to help not only my mental health, but the quality of my life. And if you love me, then you'll let me buy this monitor. I feel the, like that's a good method. Um, my wife would see right through that. Uh, but I have a lot of pets. <laughs> so my answer would be, uh, clearly the pets knocked my old monitors off the desk and they broke and I need to replace them. And you know what, instead of replacing them by buying two monitors again, I'm just going to buy one this time. Yeah, uh, I'm know, saving that's money, the, honey. The clear answer. Um, okay, let's do a quick uh, let's do a quick summation on the outro stuff. Uh, Live.corsair.com for the giveaway. If you want to win a 50, uh, 45 flex, go to Live.corsair.com and into the giveaway. You win a monitor, keyboard, mouse, headset, and a mouse pad. Um, pretty cool giveaway. So go check it out. And yes, the warranty does apply to the giveaway. Uh, the other thing is go and pre-order it on Corsair.com slash flex. If you want to pre-order the monitor, uh, buy it, they will ship within two to three weeks. You'll be able to game throughout almost all of 2023 in whatever curve you want uh, from flat to 800 R uh, in the first bendable gaming OLED monitor in the world. Uh, so go out and, and check that out today. Uh, Roby, you want to do a quick plug for your stuff coming up? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, we have some we have some really cool stuff coming up. Number one, go chat, go to youtube.com slash RobyTech. We actually took this monitor uh, and we uh, we built a pop up location uh, at a local mall here in Seattle uh, and just let people check it out. So if you're wondering, like, you, you know, you, you have us here on the screen, but sometimes you're like, you know, what do what do other folks think? We just had kids, adults, a ton of people just come and check this out. So go look at their reactions live. Great opportunity. And then the last thing, you know, just speaking to George there a little bit. Um, uh, coming out next week, we actually took this along with a built a Corsair PC out in the middle of the wilderness and then played games on the back of a truck powered by the Ford F-150 Lightning. Uh, and we're going to be giving that PC away, uh, which is which looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, so if you want to win a PC that would be great to power uh, this amazing uh, monitor uh, and then also see this thing live in action in the middle of absolutely nowhere powered by nothing but a truck. Uh, that's going to be a fun video uh, and that'll be out uh, mid next week. So. All right. And one last question before we go, I wanted to thank you guys all for being out here. Uh, I did see Decaster 192 ask, is this the CEO of Corsair? No, uh, Andy <laughs> dresses much better than I do. Uh, I'm still wearing work shirts and stuff and, and, and jeans. Uh, Andy is a very snappy dresser. If you ever see him, that, that'll be the big difference is the tweed jackets with the leather. I was going to leave that out there. I was just going to let people think that you were George. I feel like you've got an air of leadership about you, sir. You know, let's, I appreciate let's it. I'll, I'll take that as a, as a compliment. George for president. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get oh, it going. God, no. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, chat, Thank you for guys. tuning we'll in. See you guys Thanks later. guys for watching the stream. We look forward to talking to you guys next time. Uh, have a good day. Bye. Bye, guys.
Hey guys, the stream's gonna start in just a second, but first we have some people from LG to talk about some of the cool details of the Flex Monitor. First up is Mina Lee. She's the Director of Gaming Strategy and Marketing at LG. How are you doing today, Mina? I'm doing great. How's it going for you, George? I'm doing great too. So let's talk about the LG Display Group and what you guys do there. Well, LG Display is the research arm of all OLED products from LG brand. And one of our core research has been about making the perfect gaming monitor that no gamers have yet experienced. The world's first 21 by 9 OLED bendable monitor is definitely an excitement for us here as well. Yeah, I was excited the minute I saw the first prototype almost a year ago now. It's been a really cool experience working with you guys on such an innovative product. What was it like for you guys? Everyone was hands-on to accomplish something together from day one. Uh, what I have here with me uh, here is the very first mock-up from Corsair's DFM engineer in January from the very first CAD that LG Display shared with Corsair. But working with Corsair was a very special experience. Not only is Corsair an established premium brand that understand gamers so well, the strategic alliance between Corsair and LG was what we were looking for to launch this special product. Glad to hear you guys enjoyed it too. Thanks, Mina. Thanks a lot. Now let's talk to Dennis Yang, who's the director of the gaming product planning team. How are you doing today, Dennis? Hi, Zert. I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm doing great. Let's talk about the why. Uh, there have been curved monitors around for years, so what's different about this one? Our studies show that Gamers play three to four different games in a week and monitor what the different curves that gamers perform differently. For example, sports games require the flat screens. MOBA games require a 1000R curve, while RPG games are best on 800R curves for deeper immersion and performance. Right, so instead of buying an 800R curved screen and then having to suffer through that with FIFA and Madden, or you know, buying a flat monitor and then having to use that for Far Cry or The Witcher or something, you can curve the monitor to the right game type. That makes total sense, no compromises. Let's talk some other specs. Can you give us a rundown of some of the other cool parts of the LG OLED tech? LG OLED technology boasts the world's fastest 0.2 millisecond in response time. OLED is also composed of Millions of self-lighting pixels that provide the exceptional HDR performance that all gamers and gaming developers dream of. The response time and the HDR tech is phenomenal and the deep blacks that OLED gives you are one of my favorite things about it. Uh, we're going to get more into the details during the stream. Why don't you give us one little thing about the LG OLED tech that people may not know. LG OLED technology protects gamers' eyes because it naturally emits less blue light, no flicker, and less discomfort glares. Oh cool, so now I can game right up until bedtime with no sleep interruptions. Thanks a lot, Dennis. Thank you.